Hi and welcome to another NERPG tutorial. If you've played the Features demo game or the Lost Soul demo game included with NERPG, you may have noticed the different armor classes available, cloth, plate, and leather. But what happens if you want to extend those armor classes a little bit and use something else like chainmail or brigandine? Well, that's what we're going to discuss in this tutorial. The armor classes can be extended with the armor class scriptable object and for this tutorial I will be doing just that using some armor included in the fantasy garment for Uma free set. I'll also be using this modular castle free just as a sample demo level and I will be using NERPG version 0.14.2 alpha which is available as a free download from nerpg.org slash downloads in Unity package format and also from GitHub as a complete importable Unity project. Let's get started with the demo. I have already created a new game using the demo scene included in the modular castle set and to do that you can go to Tools, NERPG, Wizard, New Game, Wizard, check Copy Existing Scene, and just pull in the Castle Demo into the existing scene, and click on Create once you've given your game a valid name. I've also installed two pieces of template content using the Template Content Wizard which is available at Tools, NERPG, Wizard, Template Content Wizard. And those are the Vendor NPC Template Package, as well as the Warrior Character Class Template Package. If you've installed those things by clicking Install, then you should be basically at the same point where I am and you should be able to follow along with this demo. One other thing that I have done is use the new equipment set wizard to import some of the gear from the fantasy garment set and there is a link to the new equipment set wizard tutorial video in the description of this video. I'm not going to go through it here because it's a little bit long. And now if we start the game, you can see that I have added the gear to the game and placed it on the vendor. We can click on the vendor and because it has no purchase price, we can purchase all of the gear for free. And I have some brigandine boots, gloves, pants, and a chainmail coif and chainmail hauberk. Looking at them, you can see they equip properly and they're on my character, but currently they are providing zero armor value to the character because I have not assigned an armor class to them because I haven't created the chainmail and brigandine armor classes yet. So let's go through and create those. To do that in your game, you'll want to open up the resources folder and look for the armor class folder. If you kept all of the defaults when you created the game using the new game wizard, then you should have cloth, leather, and plate armor classes available. Go ahead and click on create any RPG armor class, and I'm going to add the brigandine armor class. If you haven't heard of brigandine before, it's basically leather with steel plates attached to it. So I'm going to make sure to set the name Brigandine at the top here. And then I can set the armor per level, which is really the only other property that we need to set. Now it should be noted that the armor per level is the amount of armor you'd get if you are wearing every single armor slot with this type of armor in it. So if I put one armor per level, that doesn't mean one armor per piece of brigandine gear. It means one armor if I have basically all eight armor slots with brigandine gear on it. 
So in that case, just to make things simple, let's set the value there to, actually there are technically, I think there's 10 armor slots. So we'll set the value to 10. And what you should see is basically at level one, we'll get one armor per piece of gear. It should work out pretty evenly that way. Next, we'll create the, uh, the um, chainmail armor class. So I'll go to create any RPG armor class and I'll call it chainmail. And I'm gonna make this basically twice as much as the brigandine. So I'll get 20 for a full set of chainmail. And I'll just give the file a name too, chainmail armor class. Now that I have those armor classes, I can go down and assign them to the equipment. So under item equipment armor, I'll select the three brigandine ones and go down, look at, for the armor class name and choose brigandine. I'm also gonna choose require armor class. And what that means is that the armor will not only get the armor values from the brigandine armor class, but your character will actually have to know the brigandine armor class to be able to equip it. And I'll do the same thing for chainmail. I will set the armor class name to chainmail and click on require armor class. Let's go ahead and click save and press play. If I start up a new game again, and go over to the vendor and purchase all of this equipment, you can see that I can still purchase it, but when I mouse over it in my inventory, the word brigandine or chainmail are both red. And if I right click on them, you can see that nothing is happening because my character does not know those armor classes yet which means that he cannot equip that gear. So let's go ahead and add those to the character class. It should be noted that you can add them to character class, character race, class specialization, unit profile, unit type, or directly in your game manager. All of these are scriptable objects or configurations that allow you to use capabilities, which includes armor classes. In this case, I'm just gonna be adding it to the character class. So I will go to the warrior character class and I will open up capabilities here. And then under the armor class list, you can see my warrior already knows plate armor, but I will also add brigandine armor and chainmail armor. If I press play, my warrior should now be able to equip those items. You may notice that the warrior in here is naked and if you've been following along, you may have some default warrior gear. And that's just because uh, for the purpose of this demo, I've updated the equipment names and just removed all of the default armor from this list. By default, there's a whole set of plate armor. Um, so if you're noticing that difference, then that's why. And it's just because I've removed all those. So we'll go over to the vendor and purchase this gear again. You can see that now the brigandine is giving me one armor per item. And that's because it's basically taken the number of armor slots, which is 10, and divided that total value of 10 armor per level for the Brigandine armor class to get one armor per piece of gear. And similarly, you'll notice for the chain mail that we're getting two armor per piece of gear. And that's because we set that armor value to 20 for the chain mail. and that 20 got divided by the 10 possible character slots. So now you can see that I have seven armor because I'm getting four from the two pieces of chainmail, 
total, and then one each from the brigandine equipment. I'm going to save the game now, and because this armor is set to a dynamic scale, it's going to level up with the character. So I'm just going to install a cheat code so that I can level my character up with a cheat command. And to do that, I'm just going to install the all cheat commands template package, which gives me the gain XP command. And with the gain XP command, I can level my character up with a chat command and just demonstrate how those armor values are going to scale. So I'll load my warrior up. And I need 100 XP to get to the next level. So I'll type gain XP 100. Now you can see that my warrior is level 2. The chainmail coif has now leveled up to level 2 because it's going to scale all the way up to level 50, which is the max level for this particular game that I have configured. And you can see that my chainmail coif now has 4 armor because it has 2 armor per piece of gear times the character level, which is level 2, so 2 times 2 is 4. Similarly, my brigandine pants now have 2 armor because it's taking the one armor per piece of gear and multiplying that. If you want to know what the armor value is going to be, you can look at the equation on the armor class documentation, and it's basically the item level times the armor per level times the item quality multiplier times 1 over the total number of armor slots, which currently is 10. The item quality multiplier, if you are interested, is available in the item qualities. So you can see for the common item quality, which is basically what this gear is, then we just have a stat multiplier of 1. However, if you look at, for example, the legendary item quality, then we have a stat multiplier of 2. So if I was to change this armor to legendary from common, then you would basically see everything doubling. And let's just go ahead and demonstrate that. We'll change this armor to legendary armor and press play. And theoretically, what we should see now is that we're getting 8 armor per piece from the chainmail, and we should be getting 4 armor per piece. Once the character is at level 2, I didn't actually save that yet, though. So let's just set the level to 2. And you can see now that the brigandine boots from the vendor are now four armor per piece, and for the chainmail coif, it's eight armor per piece. And the reason these didn't change is because they're actually fixed at what the item quality was when I purchased them, so you still see the old values on the common gear that the player is wearing. But you can see the new updated values on the armor as we get it from the vendor. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you find it useful to be able to add your own armor classes to your game. If you did enjoy that, then don't forget to thumbs up the video, subscribe to the NERPG YouTube channel, or leave a note in the comments telling me what other tutorials you would like to see in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next video.